In this video, I'm going to show you how to run a WordPress website locally on your computer within a virtual box virtual machine. And the WordPress website itself is going to be running on top of something called a LEMP server, L-E-M-P, which stands for Linux, Nginx, MySQL, and PHP. So at this point, this video is kind of a continuation from the last video where I showed you how to set up an Ubuntu server virtual machine. So go ahead and watch that first. And then we can pick up where we left off there by starting to install the LEMP server in WordPress. So let's go ahead and do that. I have my virtual machine, Ubuntu 22.04, running in headless mode. And at the end of the last video, I showed you guys how to open that and, or connect to that in a terminal window via SSH. So let's go ahead and do that. Whoops. We'll open up our terminal window, do SSH, your username, at localhost. Hit enter, type in your password, and now we are connected to that Ubuntu virtual machine via SSH. So first thing, always good practice we should do is do a sudo apt update. And what this does is updates the package repositories that your system is looking at. And now that we have done that, we can do a sudo apt upgrade, which is actually going to upgrade the packages on your system to the latest version. Okay, now that we have the latest and greatest on our system, we can install the web server, which is called Nginx with sudo apt install Nginx. And yes, we want to continue, so hit enter and we'll let that do its thing. Okay, now at this point, the Nginx server is running. So in theory, we should be able to load that website, the default landing page for Nginx, if we just go to a web browser and go to localhost local, if I can spell right, local host, uh, but that's not gonna work. And if you did watch the last video, you'll know that in order to have our host machine talk to our virtual machine, we had to open up a port for SSH to work. So we have to do something similar for uh, the HTTP port, which is port 80. So we'll open up our virtual box uh, manager, make sure you have your virtual machine selected here, go to settings, go to network, advanced, port forwarding, and we'll add a new port forwarding rule here. Kind of like we did before, TCP protocol, host port 80, guest port 80, hit OK, OK, and then we'll get out of here, and we should be able to reload this page and see the default Nginx landing page, which we do, so that means all that stuff is working. All right, we'll come back here later, but for now we want to do some more installation of packages, so we're doing a LAMP server, we have Linux, which is our Ubuntu operating system. We have Nginx, which we just installed. Now we need MySQL and PHP. So we're gonna be using uh, a version of MySQL called Maria Database. So we'll do something like sudo apt install Maria, M-A-M-A-R-I-A-D-B dash server. And then we need PHP, FPM, and PHP, MySQL. So install those. Yes, we wanna continue and we will let that do its thing. Okay, that's finished. Let's go ahead and get WordPress next. Now, where that's gonna live is in our var www directory, which is right now uh, inside the HTML directory. This is what we saw when we loaded that Nginx default landing page, this one right here. That's the HTML code behind that. Um, we're gonna make a new directory in here called WordPress. Once we pull down WordPress, we're gonna download it and then extract it into this directory so that we can serve it to the public or in this case, our local computer because it's a virtual machine. So let's go ahead and do that with sudo wget https colon slash slash wordpress.org slash latest dot tar dot gz. So that's gonna pull down that archive file. So we have that on our computer now right here. And now we can um, extract that with sudo tar dash xzvf and then the name of the tar file latest.tar.gz and whoops, I said, I did not say tar. So we'll try that again. And that's gonna go ahead and extract it into the WordPress uh, directory right here. So we don't need that archive anymore. We can remove that with rm command. And uh, we might have to use sudo privileges for that, sudo rm latest tar.gz. Okay, now the thing is we're working in this directory issuing sudo commands. Um, permissions get kind of mess messed up. So the best way to um, make sure you have the proper permissions is to recursively apply them to 
the WordPress directory and everything underneath that. So we can do that with sudo find uh, everything inside the WordPress directory that is a directory recursively. Um, we're going to execute the chmod command and give them the permissions of 755. Okay, so that, I won't go into that too much, but you'll just run into issues if you don't have the proper permissions when you're serving uh, content on a website. So we'll do that. We did that for directories. Let's do that again now for uh, files underneath the WordPress directory. So type F for files. We'll do something very similar. We'll do chmod 644 uh, for everything under there. And with that, we should be in good shape as far as WordPress is concerned. Now, the next thing we want to do is to, um, we have installed MySQL or Maria database, which is a version of MySQL. Um, we want to secure that installation and MySQL actually makes that really easy. They, it comes pre-built with this command called MySQL secure installation. So basically the installation comes with a whole bunch of defaults that we want to either turn on or off. Uh, so we can go ahead and do that here. So if you want to set a root password, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to do that for, and this is a root password for your MySQL database. Um, do you want to have Unix socket authentication? Now, most of these options, you want to accept the default. So we'll say yes. Uh, do you want to change the root password? No. Remove anonymous users? Yes. Disallow root login remotely? Yes. Remove test database and access to it? Yes. Reload privileged tables now? Yes. So that's about it. That's all we have to do for that. We'll continue on with actually setting up um, a database for our WordPress website. And we can do that from the MySQL command line or the Maria database command line. So we can access that with MySQL-U and we'll use our root user with the password that we just set. So go ahead and log into that. Whoops. Okay, sorry about that guys. I must have messed up when I was doing the secure installation for MySQL. The default password for root is empty. Um, I thought I typed it in, but I guess I did not. Um, I'm gonna have to change that again. So I will type in my root password here and go through this setup again. And now I can connect to the MySQL shell with my password. Otherwise, there isn't a password. So now we are on our MySQL shell command prompt, whatever you want to call it. And I have some commands over here that we're going to issue. And rather than typing them in front of you, I'll just copy and paste them. I'll have them available down below. So what we're going to do is create a database called example database. So we'll do that. And then we're going to create a user and a password. So the user for this database is going to be called example underscore user and the password is example underscore pw. These are just, as, as, there's, as I said in the example, they're just examples. So I highly recommend better usernames, stronger passwords, all that good stuff. But because this is just a tutorial, we're going to do uh, something quick and easy. So we're going to grant all privileges uh, for that database to that user. And then finally, we will flush privileges, which kind of applies to those changes that we just made. And we'll exit out of there. So from the database perspective for now, we're doing pretty good. Okay, let's work on the Nginx configuration next. So a lot of stuff that happens with Nginx is in the etc Nginx sites available directory. And in here we have our default configuration, which handles serving that default landing page. But we're going to make a new configuration in here for our WordPress website. So before we do that, I want to just confirm because I know a lot of people get tripped up at this point. I want to check what version of PHP that at PHP FPM specifically that we installed. So let's take a look inside the var run PHP directory, var run PHP. And as you can see here, our socket, which we're going to reference in our configuration file is PHP 8.1. So we got to remember that when we're writing our um, Nginx configuration file because we're going to reference that in there. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to make a new file in here with sudo called wordpress.conf. And I'm going to be using the Vim text editor in this tutorial. A lot of people find it hard to use. Nano might be easier for you. Um, but go ahead and choose whatever text editor you want. If you're using Vim to edit a file, you to start editing a file, you type I to enter the insert mode. And again, rather than typing all this in front of you, 
I'm going to copy and paste a configuration. Whoops. I'm going to copy and paste the configuration that I have already created for our WordPress website. And I'll go through this, explain it line by line so you know what's going on. So we have this PHP handler, which we are referencing down here. We're defining it up here. And that's just pointing to our Unix socket that we just looked at for um, our PHP FPM version 8.1. Okay, so we're gonna listen on port 80. We already have that port open. We opened that earlier in this tutorial. Our server name's gonna be localhost. We're serving our website out of the var www WordPress directory. And the index file is going to be called index.php, which is a standard uh, for WordPress. Um, this location block is just saying when somebody goes to that page, what are we gonna do with the URL what are we going to do with the arguments? And you can take a look at that. That's what that does here. And then any PHP files, how are we going to handle them? How are we going to execute them? Well, these two lines take care of that for us. Okay, so very simple explanations, uh, but hopefully that'll point you in the right direction. So we'll save that. And now we made our configuration for Nginx, but there's also this other directory in here, uh, just up a level called Sites Enabled. Inside site's available, this is kind of where you work on your configuration, and then when you're ready to publish it, you basically make a link to it, a symbolic link from sites available to sites enabled. So let's do that now. So we can do that with sudo ln-s to make a symbolic link from etc nginx sites available, wordpress.conf, and we're gonna link that to etc nginx sites enabled, hit enter, and now if we check back in there, we see that we do have that linked over here as well in the site's enabled directory. And is what's good practice is also to uh, make sure your configuration file doesn't have any syntax errors in it. So we can do that with sudo nginx-t for test. And it says the configuration file that uh, nginx is okay. The configuration file test is successful. And this one um, does reference the file that we just create it. So we should be good to go. Last thing I want to do is do a sudo system ctl restart nginx, which is going to uh, restart the nginx server and pick up all of the changes that we just made. So we'll do that. And now when we go back to our web browser and reload this page, we should not see the nginx default landing page anymore. We should see the WordPress installation screen now since we made our nginx configuration. So let's try that and indeed we do. So there's just a couple steps here. We have to point WordPress to our MySQL database that we created. So let's go ahead and take care of that stuff. So the database name was example database. The username was example user. The password was, oops, US ER. And then the password was example password. Database host is going to be local host and the Table free prefix for WP underscore is fine. So we'll go ahead and submit that. And unable to write to WP config.php file. So our permissions earlier should have taken care of that, but let me go back here and make sure we did that right. Ah, yep, we did miss one step from earlier. Let's go back into the var www directory. And the one thing that I did miss, we did change um, the the permissions for those files, but we did not change the owner. So right now, if we look inside of the WordPress directory, nobody and no group owns all of the files in there. What we want to do is change that ownership from nobody to the www data group. So we can do that with sudo chown recursively uh, to the www data user and the www data group and we're going to do that to the WordPress directory and everything under it. So we'll do that. And now if we look inside of the WordPress directory, we should see that that user in that group has been updated. So um, I'm not actually sure what, I think we're okay at this point. Let's just go back and resubmit that to see if we get past that page. And yeah, we do. So it says, all right, Sparky, you made it through this part of the installation. Now we can run the installation and this is where you're going to start customizing your website. So what's your site title? Mine's going to be called Tony Teaches Tech. My username is going to be TTT. 
there's my password. I'll just copy that so I have it in my email, Tony at Tony teaches dot tech. So we'll install WordPress. Doesn't take long at all. Log in. And now we're actually logging into our WordPress admin dashboard. So use your username that you just created, TTT for me, type in your password, log in. And here is your WordPress admin dashboard that is running from within your virtual machine on your local computer. We're at localhost slash WP admin. So you can do a whole bunch of stuff in here. Here is your website, just the default probably 2023 theme here. Um, I have a whole another video over here about 15 important things to do after you install WordPress. So I recommend that you check that out next.